It's our weekly check-in with the Oakville Milton Humane Society, and sitting across from me virtually is Maddie Ginota, registered veterinary technician for the Oakville Milton Humane Society. Maddie, who is our guest of honor this week? Our guest of honor this week is little Miss Thea here, this adorable little Shih Tzu. I'll give her her treat that she's so eagerly looking for. Of course. She is uh, one, of our, one of our dogs here. Um, she's been here with us for a couple of months and is currently waiting on a uh, dental surgery to have her teeth cleaned and have some of her unhappy teeth taken out of her mouth. So before we get in, because we're going to talk a little bit about the dental situation yeah. with pets, uh, what is Thea's story and her personality? Who would be an appropriate uh, new home for Thea? So Thea came to us after her previous owner was unable to care for her and her brother. Uh, she's got another little Shih Tzu friend who lives with her here at the shelter as well. We've been able to keep them together, which is really nice since they've spent uh, the majority of their lives together. So she's definitely, you know, Shih Tzus are a lot more high energy than people think that they are being a small dog. They're, they're smart, they're clever. Um, and especially in her and her and Jang, who Django is her brother, uh, they're they're bonded. So they have a little kind of little pack with each other. And he definitely looks towards her for for leadership. But since he's been he's been here, we've been able to get him being a little braver, which has been good for him. Um, but for Miss Thea here, she's unfortunately had a couple uh, medical issues while she's here, but she's uh, on the road to recovery and going to be getting her her dental soon, which is hopefully the last step before she'll be able to go for adoption. Would your goal be to have them both adopted to the same household? Would that they be They will idea? be adopted, yeah. So they're, they in will as, be. they're in as a bonded pair, so they'll need to go, uh, they're gonna be going together to their forever home. Excellent. All right. Well, Thea, uh, we'll be up very soon. Uh, and, you know, you mentioned uh, the dental procedure that Thea needs and February is pet dental month. So let's talk a little bit about this. I think people neglect their pets teeth. It's funny. So much of a focus is on our teeth as humans, but we forget about our pets. What is best practice when you have, you know, someone like little Thea there to keep their teeth clean? So definitely. So from so the best thing that you can do for for your dog's teeth, just like with your own, is starting them out. Um, from a young age, getting them used to having, you know, your hands in their mouth, having their teeth brushed and start off with that really good foundation of home dental care. Mm -hmm. um, so brushing their, brushing their teeth, checking their teeth regularly, making sure we're not noticing any fractures, any plaque or tartar builds up, um, any gingivitis or so redness or swelling of the gums that can happen in there as well. And then as needed, the best thing that we can do for them is actually have dental procedures done at your veterinary clinic. Oh, she's, I've got treats on my desk that she knows are there. Um, you move. And so having a dental procedure done at your veterinarian entails having your animal go in. They have a full general anesthetic because, you know, sit still and say, ah, doesn't work quite as well for, mm. for them as it does for us. And a registered veterinary technician will, you know, have a look at their, their whole mouth. They'll chart any abnormalities that they notice, just like the dental hygienist does when you go to the dentist. We do full mouth x-rays on them to make sure we can see what's going on under the surface of the teeth. And then we scale and polish the teeth, just like you'd have at your, your own human dentist. And uh, if any extractions need to happen, so whether they have diseased teeth, too much plaque and tartar buildup, which causes them to have um, mobility issues with their teeth. They get loose and wiggly, which is uncomfortable. If they have any fractures of their teeth, which can expose painful nerve endings uh, in the tooth, anything like that would uh, cause need for a, a dental extraction. So, you know, we hear a lot on commercials about, oh, these are dental snacks for dogs. I, yeah, I, we don't have uh, dental snacks for humans. So I'm curious, do dental snacks actually assist in keeping teeth healthy and strong for pets? So dental treats are definitely a piece of the puzzle in the in the home health care realm of things. Uh, tooth brushing is going to be your best step and kind of the best way to help keep those teeth healthy, free of plaque and tartar. A d uh, dental specific diet, um, either one that you purchase from veterinarian or there are a couple of good ones from the pet store as well can help keep those plaque and tartar levels done. And then you have the dental treats, which can contribute to a healthy mouth. Something that you're gonna to wanna to look for is the VOHC seal. So it's the Veterinary Oral Health Council. And what they do is they have a set of guidelines that uh, products need to meet in order to get that seal put on the product. And that tells you that you know that product will actually contribute to controlling either the plaque, tartar, or both in some products cases uh, for, for that dental treat, whether it's the treat, they have 
foods, they have toothbrushes. If you go on their website, they have a whole list of approved uh, products that have that VOHC seal on them. So you can find one that you know is actually gonna help and contribute to your pet's oral health. You mentioned the brushing. Uh, you know, we're told to brush our teeth twice a day. How often are we supposed to brush our pet's teeth? So gold standard is always brush your, brush your dog's teeth once a day. Um, that's gold standard. <laughs> I, uh, I wish I could see I did that with my, with my own dog's teeth. And definitely uh, that's what you'll be told when you go to bed. what I've you know, told clients for years. We are realistic. As much as you can is always going to be the most helpful. If you can sit down and you get them into your routine where you're brushing their teeth, even if you're just doing it once or twice a week, uh, you know, up to three to four times a week, that will be more helpful. And even just doing a light brush, that will be more helpful than sitting down and doing it once every month or once every two months. But if you get a little bit of brushing in multiple times a week, it, you know, keeps that plaque from building up because once you have um, plaque and the harder tartar material, you can't actually remove that with a toothbrush. Mm -hmm. So if you're in there, you know, daily or at least you know a few times a week doing a doing a brush to get that soft plaque off that will help in the long term more than sitting down and doing a big thorough brush once every month or two fantastic maddie thank you so much for your time today appreciate it for the uh, the dental tips for our pets no problem happy to be here